Hello, my name is Lucia. I am a geologist with the Nevada Division of Minerals, and I would like to welcome you to this video that will cover the Late Cenozoic Ice Age. If it feels like you are currently living in an ice age, it might not just be the weather outside. So bundle up if needed, and let's get started. The Late Cenozoic Ice Age began about 115,000 years ago. The beginning of this ice age is marked by the formation of the Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is still present today. This ice sheet is being pointed out by the arrow at the bottom of the map in the right-hand portion of the screen. For reference, Carson City is also being pointed out on the map as well, which is where this video was made. This ice age is also referred to as the Antarctic glaciation event and is still ongoing today. Glaciology is the scientific study of glaciers. A glaciologist is a scientist who studies glaciers. According to glaciologist, an ice age is defined as whenever extensive ice sheets are present in both the northern and southern hemispheres of Earth. Do we have ice sheets in the Arctic or the North Pole? Yes, we do. Do we have ice sheets in the Antarctic or the South Pole? Yes, we do. Therefore, by definition, we are living in an ice age. How cool is that? During every ice age, there are stages. A glacial stage is when glaciers are very extensive or cover large areas of the Earth. An interglacial stage is when the glaciers are less extensive or cover smaller areas of Earth. Each time we have a glacial stage followed by an interglacial stage, it is referred to as a cycle. So far, during the late Cenozoic Ice Age, the Earth has experienced 20 cycles. That is, 20 periods of really big ice sheets and 20 periods of ice sheets that aren't so big. The late Cenozoic Ice Age is not the first time an ice age has happened on Earth, though. There have been six major ice ages in the geologic past. We will look at the timing of these ice ages with respect to some major events that have taken place on planet Earth since its formation. When scientists like myself talk about geologic time, we refer to the geologic time scale. The geologic time scale is the calendar, if you will, for events that have taken place in Earth's history. We are going to put the geologic time scale on this yearly calendar we are all familiar with because it is really hard for us to understand the scale of time when it covers 4.6 billion years. You can see on the left hand side of the screen the months of the year and up across the top are the days of the month. Next, we will transpose the geologic time scale onto our calendar. Here we have the geologic time scale, or the 4.6 billion years of Earth's history put to the calendar year. Each time period is shown by a different background. So the first period of time is the Hadean and is represented by the lava looking background covering the whole month of January and just over half of February. Using our calendar, the formation of Earth occurred on January 1st. The inferred origin of life, or the first cells, on February 25th. The first ice age Earth ever experienced began around March 29th. Cells with a nucleus, these are the types of cells you have, don't show up until July 18th. Around the same time, the second ice age to affect planet Earth begins. The third ice age results in what is referred to as Snowball Earth and began around October 11th. The Cambrian Explosion of Life. This is when multicellular life really grabbed a hold and began to take off. Didn't start until November 17th. The first fish on November 21st. The fourth ice age begins early on November 27th, followed by the first land plants, which appear later that day. Sharks and land animals show up in the fossil record on December 2nd. 
followed closely by the fifth ice age, which began on December 3rd. Reptiles make their debut on December 5th. The first mammal-like reptiles appear on December 11th. First dinosaurs, December 13th. First mammals, December 14th. First birds, December 19th. First flowering plants, December 22nd. And T-Rex doesn't hit the scene until December 26th. And finally, the topic of our discussion, the sixth ice age, the late Cenozoic ice age, starts during the last half of the day on the last day of the year. Modern humans don't occur in the fossil record until the last 12 seconds of the year. Out of 31,536,000 seconds that make up a calendar year, we represent just 12 seconds of that. Let's briefly review plate tectonics. The Earth is made up of seven major tectonic plates that are always in motion. You can think of these tectonic plates as the thin layer of ice on top of your soda, the soda being the melted portion of the inside of the Earth or the mantle where the magma lives. Tectonic plates are constantly traveling around on the mantle even if you can't see or feel them doing so. This is a diagram showing the layers of the Earth. We have the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. Tectonic plates make up the crust and move due to convection or movement of the magma in the mantle. This is an example of how convection works. On the left is an image of a pot of water on a stove with two floating blocks of wood. As the stove heats up, the water starts to boil. A convection current will develop, causing the wood blocks to separate and pushing them to the edges of the pan. The image on the right shows the same scenario, only with a view into the earth. Tectonic plates may converge, forming a convergent margin, diverge, forming a divergent margin, or slide past one another, forming a transform plate boundary. We will first look at divergent margins. This happens when tectonic plates move away or diverge from one another. When plates move away from one another, the mantle is exposed and magma will spill onto the surface of the earth as lava, which cools and makes new crust. Next, we will look at convergent margins. Since the earth is a sphere where there are tectonic plates moving away from each other in one portion of the world, there are plates crashing into one another in another part of the world. When plates of equal density crash into one another, they will buckle or fold, and this is where mountains are built. So, when continental crust crashes into continental crust, or oceanic crust collides with oceanic crust, neither will give, so they just buckle and build mountains upwards. However, when plates of different densities collide, the heavier plate will sink or subduct underneath the lighter plate, eventually turning the heavier plate back into magma. Oceanic crust is very dense or heavy, so it will sink underneath the lighter continental crust. As it sinks and the plate is melted, magma chambers are created, which produce volcanic mountain ranges as the buoyant magma tries to reach the surface. Finally, we will look at a transform plate boundary. Transform plate boundaries occur when two tectonic plates slide past one another. An example of this type of boundary is the San Andreas Fault. So why did the late Cenozoic Ice Age happen? The cause, a result of plate tectonics. Tectonic forces pulled South America and Australia away from Antarctica. 
The direction of tectonic plate movement is shown by the orange arrows in the screen. As the continents drifted apart, the Drake and Tasmanian passages were opened. This would result in a change from the ocean current patterns shown in the current screen by the black wavy lines to the current pattern shown on this screen. The circumantarctic current still exists today and it circles Antarctica. It is a major reason for why it is so cold in Antarctica. The current caused ice sheets to form which grew even bigger with falling CO2 levels during this time. There are several hypotheses on why CO2 levels began to fall, but for this video we are going to stick to the basics. In a nutshell, if there is too much CO2, it gets really hot. If there is too little, it gets very cold. If it's too hot, glaciers melt and the earth enters a greenhouse state or what scientists call greenhouse earth. If it is too cold, ice sheets will form expanding as it gets colder resulting in what is called an ice house earth. As you can see, the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere is a big player in global climate and the comfort or survival of all organisms living here on Earth. CO2 levels can change and have fluctuated throughout the history of planet Earth as a result of many geological and biological events. What was North America like during these glacial stages? In general, a thick ice sheet covered almost all of Canada, all the way up to the North Pole. The ice sheet extended down into the northern portion of the United States, with a few areas within the United States having isolated ice sheets. The main ice sheet was about 2.5 miles thick. This would be equal to 377 school buses long, or 880 of the tallest mammoths standing on top of one another. Eastern North America consisted of coniferous forests, or forests dominated with pine trees and firs, like what we see today in the Sierra Nevadas. The Western United States was dominated by vast grasslands, like what we currently see in the Plains region of the U.S. today. As oceanic water turned to ice, sea levels fell, exposing the floor of the Bering Sea. These tracts of exposed land are referred to as land bridges. Many animals use the Bering Land Bridge for passage into the Americas from Asia, including the woolly mammoth and the Colombian mammoths. These animals would spread out across the United States and down into South America in search of suitable habitats to call their homes. Many of these animals were very large. Really big animals are referred to by scientists as megafauna. Some of the common megafauna fossils found from the late Cenozoic Ice Age in the western United States include the giant ground sloth, mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, wolves, and bears. Why were the animals so big? Scientists aren't certain, but one hypothesis is they had to be big in order to defend themselves from predators. The grasslands that covered most of the western United States didn't offer many places to hide, so they needed other ways to defend themselves. Several animals grew really large in order to intimidate their predators, like mammoths, elephants, rhinos, hippos, megatherium, the elephant-sized ground sloths, and paraceratherium, the hornless rhinos. Many fast-running animals also evolved during this time period. Antelope, which are the fastest land animal in North America, are thought to have evolved speed as a mechanism to evade predators such as the North American cheetah. As a fun side note, 
Since I am a fan of Ice Age movies and a bigger fan of Scrat, there have been fossils found of saber-toothed squirrels in South America. Let's talk for a moment about what Nevada was like during the peak of the late Cenozoic Ice Age. During this time, only a few of Nevada's mountains were heavily glaciated. Climatic cooling caused less evaporation and more precipitation, which accumulated in the many basins throughout Nevada. These are called pluvial lakes. Pluvial means rain. The largest of these lakes was Lake Lahontan, which was restricted to western Nevada and covers 8,610 acres. This is about the size of New Jersey. Lake Lahontan was over 500 feet deep. Walker and Pyramid Lakes are the last remnants of Lake Lahontan. A living relic of Nevada's Ice Age is Pyramid Lakes Kuiwi fish. Mammoths or mastodons, giant ground sloths, camels, shrub oxen, horses, cheetahs, and other extinct mammals are known to have lived in Nevada during this time. If you were to have had a home 12,500 years ago here in Nevada, when you looked outside, your view may have looked like the image shown here on the screen. You may have seen many of the animals we discussed a few slides back and many more. Here in this screen, we can see Colombian mammoths, saber-toothed cats, bison, and camels. There are probably some dire wolves hiding in the background as well. This photo is an artist's depiction of what Tule Springs National Monument outside of Las Vegas may have looked like. Tule Springs is open to the public and is one place where you can explore fossils common to the late Cenozoic Ice Age here in Nevada. You can also explore the Ice Age at Ice Age Fossils State Park near Las Vegas and see a Colombian mammoth skeleton at the Nevada State Museum here in Carson City. Before we conclude this presentation, we need to visit land bridges again. Remember, the late Cenozoic Ice Age started about 115,000 years ago. Modern day humans evolved 200 to 300,000 years ago and began to move out of Africa starting about 70 to 100,000 years ago. As they migrated, some eventually found and utilized the Bering Land Bridge as passage into the Americas, just like the animals before them. Scientists have found evidence that suggests humans arrived in North America around 24,000 years ago. These first travelers are the ancestors of the Native Americans. Native Americans spread out through the Americas over thousands of years. European settlers didn't arrive on the shores of North America until 20,000 years later. Following the arrival of the Europeans, humans have spread out through the Americas in great numbers. This map shows the current population density of the United States. The higher the spike, the more people there are. We can easily see the area around New York which is being pointed out by the black arrow, has the highest density of people. In general, the eastern United States, which is circled here on the screen, has more people than the western U.S. You can see this by looking at the color of the ground. It is almost all pink or red in the circled area, or the eastern United States, where the western U.S. still has lots of white areas with little pockets of populated areas spread throughout. So where are we heading? Will we be staying in this ice house earth or are we headed towards a greenhouse earth? Well, nobody knows for sure, but what we have learned is that changes on and around the earth can trigger ice ages or ice house earth. These same triggers can initiate greenhouse earth as well. If you think about what our world looks like today and compare it to what we have just seen in the peak of the late Cenozoic Ice Age, we can be sure that whatever direction our climate heads in, 
our world will look different. There will be different plants, different animals, and a different view out of the windows we gaze through. We have reached the end of this presentation. We hope you have learned something cool about the Ice Age that we are still living in. I know I learned lots of new stuff while putting this presentation together. Be sure to check out our other videos on our Education and Outreach page by typing in the URL or scanning the QR code shown on the screen. Have a great day.